how's it going folks? Kira and I are going to harvest the sweet potato patch, uh, patch, it's a pouch isn't it? A pouch, um, in the wicking garden at the base of the back stairs here. Um, they've been in a little bit too long, normally in our climate, um, sweet potatoes are an 18 to 20 week crop, they've been in for about 24 weeks so um, I don't think that'll affect them too much but yeah we'll see what they look like in a minute. So the slips went into the pouch vertically this time with the base of the slip down near the bottom of the pouch, normally I just bury them under the surface of the soil. Along with the sweet potatoes we had in a pouch next to them a couple of cucumbers and they were the most productive cucumbers we've ever had weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, so we're pretty chuffed about that. The plant did go downhill towards the end though. I had a little bit of aphid infestation and also to whitefly. Um, we ended up seeing a fair few uh, ladybugs on there. So I pretty much will just let it go to become a ladybug nursery um, as we do with a couple of plants around the place. Uh, I did get a nice pleasant surprise yesterday though while I was pulling it out. I found a massive yellow cucumber down between two pouches. Uh, if we had the chickens I would have fed it to them but I'd say it'll end up going into the worm farm. So anyway, I'll get into snipping back the um, vine from the sweet potato and then Koo can um, lay out the blue tarp and we'll try and empty it out and see what sort of a yield we got. I'm just around the back of the little root pouch garden here and as you can see some of the vines grew rather large. I did trim it back two or three times um, through its growing season just because when you trim it back it puts a little bit more energy into the roots. Um, supposedly we'll see what they look like when we pull it out uh, also too some of the the fresher younger growth I will be saving them even though they look a bit bug ravaged um, I'll be saving them putting them in a jar of water and we'll start them off as the slips that'll go into the next pouch that gets plonked down there for the next crop of sweet potatoes I suppose the easiest way to see what's in here is just to tip it out. Push around the sides a bit. And not much wants to come out. It's just a mass of roots. No tubers. This is not looking good, Kira. And grew a mango seed. Oh, here we go. There's one. There's a nice big spud. I scratched him with my nails. Well, there's another one down there. This is going to take a while, folks. So we might speed it up a bit. See if we can peel this pouch off. Don't like my chances, though. really don't want to force these guys too much because I don't want to break up these big sweet taters. Little purple one stopping this one from coming out. So there we go. Sweet potato number one. Will this one be edible as well? Yeah, nothing wrong with him at all. Sweet potato number two. Not too shabby. That's a nice looking fella. Little baby. I might try and peel this pouch down now. Look at that. Just some massive roots down the base here. So that's the pouch off. As you can see all the roots have made it, you know, to the inside of the pouch. But, turn the pouch back around the right way, they've all been air pruned off on the higher levels. Just down where it sits in the water the most though, there are a few roots coming through and on the base as well. But that's to be expected because it's always sitting in water. So anyway, well, I'm a bit puffed after that, we'll have a dig through here. This bottom layer down here just had um, potting mix in it, um, that's what this fine loose stuff is and then on top of that I put my compost and soil blend. Definitely very moist down here. I've also got the compost worm still in here as well which is great to see. A few more up here. There's the largest white sweet potato I've found so far, supposed to have purple flesh. 
bit of a dud to that lot, I think. I think Kerry just likes playing in the mud. Sorta. Sorta. Any surprises in that last bit? There's that. There's that. Oh, okay. Cool. We'll go grab the scales. So we'll weigh these guys up now. I'll start off with the white skin purple flesh variety. I don't think I'll be growing this variety again, by the way. So we'll call that, oh, we'll call him 80 grams. We won't worry about a bit of dirt on there, will we? The next variety is the purple flesh, sorry, purple skinned white flesh variety. And all up he comes to roughly 180 grams. So again, not a very good producer. So we'll do the orange skin one now. We'll see if we can balance him this time, Heiku. Okay. So where are we? There's two kilos. Now we'll add on this big one. And that gives us 3.3. Small one to one side. 3.4. Another one there, 3.5. Final little one. There we go, 3.58 kilos. So as you can see, Yield wise, the orange flesh one did a lot better than the others. Um, just from one slip we got all this, so it will be the variety of choice from now on, um, especially when we're growing in these root pouches. So I've just got to work out which vine is which, so I know which slips to plant from the next pouch. These large sweet potatoes, I'm going to cure them over the next couple of days. I'll just bring them out into the sun, uh, give them a bit of a turn every couple of hours, and that'll harden up the skin and also help the sugars develop in the uh, potatoes themselves. The small ones will probably polish off over the weekend maybe in a sunshine curry uh, one of our favorite dishes so we'll have a bit of a look at the rest of the pouches in this garden this one down here in the corner uh, had the mint in it the mint's been hacked back so many times and I just noticed that it's starting to flower yesterday I gave the chili a bit of a cutback and saw a couple of beautiful little mint flowers in there uh, the chili itself it was suffering some nutrient deficiencies but they seem to have corrected themselves I've given it a couple of feeds of liquid fertilizer uh, down the front we've got a real big trim back yesterday there was dozens of fruit on there. Kira's been snipping them off and putting them in a little container for me and I'm going to dry up a whole heap of seeds for sharing. Um, down in here, this is one of the carrot pouches and as you can see, oh there's a couple of little carrots I've just left in there, but as you can see the sweet potato has rooted itself in here. So I'm thinking about just leaving it for the time being, um, just to see if anything eventuates from it. And in this pouch here we have a whole heap of carrots. Some of them aren't really putting on a lot of size where others are. So these guys um, have been progressively harvested, that pouch first, and now we're on to this one. There's about half of this pouch left to pull out. Uh, in this pouch over the back here we had the cucumbers uh, that were growing up on the trellis along with the sweet potato. Um, like I said before, they got um, smashed towards the end uh, with aphids and white flies but we got dozens of cucumbers from them didn't we sweetie yep. we, we actually got a little bit sick of cucumber salad didn't we yep. yeah so we a couple went into juices and my mum and dad got more than their fair share before they started to fruit so the cucumber came out yesterday and in its place I'm just going to leave this volunteer um, eggplant that sprouted in here I think there might actually be one or two little um, plants in here now but it's been the best producer for us out of all the volunteers we've had that's popped up got some nice little fruit on there so I'm going to leave there's another one down in there I'm going to leave this plant be and I'm going to um, pull out the plant down the back it will just end up being composted and this one will take over the main provider there's only so many eggplants we can handle we have been sharing a few around g'day Bev but yeah definitely only need one for our family uh, over in that corner I will be putting some more sweet potatoes there uh, we're what is it it's the um, second last week of February here so the second last week of summer but we're going to have more than enough hot weather um, to get another crop of sweet potatoes out of this position before it gets really cold come August September so yeah July August September are pretty much all the cooler months so hopefully we'll get another crop through same deal we'll just let it climb up there so we can harvest the leaves I might actually pop in a couple of beans into this pouch here after I fill it up with some compost and see if we can get some beans grow up here because our beans out the front have been smashed by a bean beetle at the moment so they don't seem to have found the plants out the back so according to um, Vegemite a couple doors up it's time to finish up 
So there you go folks, there's a bit of a look at the yield we got from the 95 litre or 25 gallon root pouch. I'm just blown away by that orange variety, I wish I knew which type it was, uh, but 7.7 .7, uh, pounds or 3.5 kilograms worth of, of root uh, from one slip, that's pretty impressive as far as I'm concerned. The um, white skinned one, two slips virtually nothing. Uh, the purple um, skinned one, uh, a couple of measly little spuds, so those two varieties, I'm not going to bother about to tell you the truth, I'll just stick with my orange variety. So I've had a couple of people ask me about doing a clip on growing these fellas in containers. Um, so yeah, they're pretty easy to grow in pouches and pots and buckets and that sort of thing. So I will knock together a clip in a couple of weeks time and give you a bit of a look at how we do it. Now you folks are coming into your summer in the northern hemisphere and us lucky people in the subtropics here in southeast Queensland we can get another crop through and I know folks up north who just grow them 12 months a year so um, I'll, I'll knock a bit of a clip together. Also too just to let you know there is they are a dual harvest plant we grow them up here up the back stairs primarily for the root but we also pop out the back whenever we need to bulk out a salad or add some more greens to a curry or stir fry snip off the little growth points the new little um, sections of leaves tender leaves and we just throw them into the salads and whatnot so um, they are a good source of a salad green as well you don't just have to grow them for the tuber they are not in the same family as a normal potato so the leaves aren't poisonous just for you folks who are going to ask that question so if this is the first time you've seen one of our clips feel free to check out the little thumbnails up there there'll be one on our harvest and how we process some of the foods we pick from the patch if you like what you see you can hit that subscribe button and tick a little box after you do and you'll be given an email every time uh, we post a clip here to YouTube and you can come along and see what's going on in our small little backyard farm um, also too, feel free to leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. I hope everyone is well and happy and I do hope that you've enjoyed the clip and I will catch you next time. Look after yourselves. Cheers folks. Uh, wash my hands. I am not. You want to wash your hands? Nope. I want to wipe on my own. Okay. Wormy, there's wormies all through there.